Hi folks, I'm Alan Watts and we're cutting through the matrix, just going through one article to do with the, the totalitarian societies and the training of the mob, you know, or the people who are now all the enemy. And uh, that's really this, what the training is all about. We're all the enemy, apparently, in this brave new world. And when we're completely united and they admit we're united, so we already are, in fact, then uh, they expect uh, problems here and there. And they're training us all to be obedient and afraid. And they're actually using social approval and social disapproval so that the masses, will, who are totally brainwashed, will turn on you if you complain about something. Well, it's okay for us. We have to bend down and get searched. What's wrong with you? And that's what they use. They use these techniques already in other countries like China. Now, it says here, a subcategory of military futurism known as red teaming. Red teaming is a way of assessing your own security from the point of view of those who would attack you as though you were, you were your own enemy. It is promoted as a way of thinking without preconceptions or boundaries. Red Te- Team Journal comments that some events are also unlikely that their very randomness lowers all obstacles to them occurring. This poses a particular problem for red teaming and threat analysis. How can we plan for every conceivable scenario or to take a different tack should we? Being strong everywhere means being weak everywhere. One can easily drain organizational resources planning for movie plot weapons of mass destruction terrorism only to be surprised by a group of men with machine guns. But protecting the national interest is a task that must be accomplished regardless of human weakness. In other words, all or nothing. They cover every imaginary possibility. They sit with think tanks and say, well, what could, well, someone might put on a, a, a false nail. It could be an explosive. And, I mean, you could, the sky's the limit with your imagination, isn't it? Totally the limit. And that's, that's what these guys get paid for. And then they put money at it and start checking your fingernails and stuff like that. I, I'm not kidding. This is how mad all of this is. That's a very scared people, you know. At the same time, at the top, they want nothing to go wrong that could throw off their big Fabian world society, their controlled world society, where you'll gradually be taught to take credits from the government in lieu of money, and you will serve, you'll be proud to serve the world system. Huxley said it perfectly well, the people will be trained to, to love their slavery. That's what you're going into. Make no bones about it. It says here, the idea that we should protect the national interest regardless of human weakness sounds more like a line from a Hollywood B-movie than something that should be taken seriously by government agencies. And yet, looking at the development of the London Olympic security, one can imagine this is a way of thinking that has taken root. So, it goes on and on and on, quite a long article, but that gives you the, the idea of uh, this incredible sci-fi nonsense we're going through with 5,000 volt fences and, and the black clad, totally armored warriors standing there with the faceless uh, uh, helmets and these masks on and all the rest of it, just like all the movies have conditioned you for, as I say, 25, 30 years. Absolutely amazing. But here we are. It's amazing, too, they can do all this when we're supposedly utterly, utterly, incredibly broke. Never been broker, they keep telling us. But they get all this money to throw at the big security companies who lobby governments, and they know all the politicians. And you know for every government contract that goes out there, there's a kickback to the guy who awarded it to them. You all know that. I hope you really understand that. That's how it all works. For the very, very naive Eve out there. Now... There's an article, too, I've read already, but it's uh, from uh, the FBI chief uh, talking about homegrown terrorism. I'll put this one up, too, where they give out their latest uh, spiel about Al-Qaeda, Al-Qaeda, this this strange, you know, fictional uh, Al-Qaeda. Still aims to strike the United States, but homegrown or unaffiliated extremists now pose an equally serious threat. FBI chief Robert Mueller, the big Nazi, warned U.S. lawmakers Thursday. And on and on it goes. It's getting the public that they're all out amongst you. They're all, anybody that's odd, you should report them. Anybody who comes out with a strange idea, like, is there something going on and we're being taken over? I wonder. Any, any odd question that you're at, just report them. Just report them right away. That's, that's all, that's what the training's all for. Now, 
And again, they give you the movies to prepare your mind. That's called predictive programming. What you see in a, in a movie, because it's fictional, your guard is not up, your sensor part of your brain is not up, you're enjoying the movie, they give you a human interest story, here's the bad guys, here's the good guys, uh, good guys trying to catch bad guys, here's the chase, they get the guy in the end, but in the way you're getting programmed with all the other ideas that they want to sink into you. The movie storyline is just the carrier for the messages, that's all it is, it's a carrier. And it says here, uh, from from this article here, uh, crime prediction software is here, and it's a very bad idea. There are no naked precogs inside glowing jacuzzis yet, but the Florida State Department of Juvenile Justice will use analysis software to predict crime by young delinquents. Remember the movie Minority Report? So it says, putting potential offenders under specific prevention and educational programs. Goodbye, human rights. They will use this software on juvenile delinquents, so I'll start on them, using a series of variables to determine the potential for these people to commit another crime. Depending on this probability, it says here, not possibly, but probability, they will put them under specific re-education programs. That's straight out of the Soviet Union. Re-education programs. So now we have gulags with 5,000 volts going through them and re-education programs. They started off the re-education programs under the guise, and it was under the guise of sensitivity training. Yeah, uh uh-huh, that's how they started it, yeah. And they always knew where they were going with it. Deepak Advani, Vice President of Predictive Analytics at IBM. There's IBM, the guys that brought up the Cardex system uh, for, for us all to be chipped, of course. They work with Rand Corporation, IBM, the beautiful IBM, or IBIM, as I like to call it, because that's really what it is. Um, also came up with a way to number people in concentration camps, the Jews and the Gypsies. Uh, there's a lot of Christians there, too, Jehovah's Witnesses and all the rest of it, and lots of Slavs got numbered, tattooed. To keep the records tidy, you understand, they've got to have everybody numbered. And we're going through electronically today, and eventually when your chip's with you, you got your number, boy <laughs> So, depending on this probability, they put them under specific re-education programs. Deepak Avani, president of the Annex IBM, says the system gives reliable projections so governments can take action in real time. Oh, I love all the terminal, in real time, oh yeah. To prevent climate, uh, or climate, (laughs) it's a part of it too, criminal uh, activities. It says here, really reliable predictions. Action in real time, preventing criminal activities. I don't know about how reliable your system is, IBM, but have you ever heard of the 5th, the 6th, the 14th Amendments to the United States Constitution? What about Article 11 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights? No. Let's make this easy then. Uh, didn't you watch that Scientology, the nutcase and Minority Report? No, he's talking about one of the actors who's in Scientology that acted the part in Minority Report. Sure, some will argue that these juvenile delinquents were already convicted for other crimes. So, hey, there's no harm. And that's how the people think, isn't it? This software will help prevent further crimes that will make all of us safe. Ah, safe. But would it? Where's the guarantee of that? Why does the state have to assume, assume that criminal behavior is a given? And why should the government decide who goes to a specific prevention uh, program or who doesn't based on what a computer says? The fact is that even if the software were was 99.99% accurate, there will always be an innocent person who will be, and he uses the expletive, which is very common in Hollywood language in the movies. And that is exactly what, uh, why we have something called due process and the presumption of innocence. That's why those things are not only in the United States Constitution, but in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights too. So that's to give you an idea, if you, one crime, remember one strike and you're out, that's it for life, folks. You have to go and get your mind, just like Clockwork Orange. See the old movie Clockwork Orange, you know. Satire in a strange, uh, surrealistic way and a bit of comedy can really get it through better often than just the, the bland spoken word or of the bare facts alone. Quite something indeed.